Many factors set Concorde aside from the other aircraft in the sky. Ignoring its sheer speed and prestigious clientele, its distinct shape was arguably the most eye-catching and recognizable thing to set it apart from other fleets around the world. This is because commercial aircraft largely conform to the formulaic design of two wings in the middle, two at the back, and the cabin down the middle. This is because it is a tried and tested layout that has proven to be efficient, familiar, and safe. It can do the job, no questions asked. In fact, even when the new types that follow this basic aircraft design are released, airlines can often be hesitant to place orders as that specific design and technology has not yet been tried and tested in commercial service. But what if a new aircraft with a radical new design and a bold claim to be up to 20% more efficient than even the latest and most cutting-edge conventional aircraft comes to the market? In July 2020, in partnership with Airbus and KLM, the Technology University of Delft unveiled a model prototype of a radical new aircraft they called the Flying V, named so after the shape of the aircraft itself. The only commonality between this new aircraft and regular passenger jets seemed to be that the cockpit remained at the nose. Directly behind it lies the passenger cabin, but not any passenger cabin that has ever been done before. Behind the cockpit door is a wide open space that may be used as the first or business class cabin, followed by a splitting of the cabin into two sections, one down each wing. To recap, the cabin would be inside the wing. This would be the first ever blended wing design ever used outside of the military. This new design has been closely compared to the Airbus A350-900, with it being suggested that the Flying V would be able to carry up to 314 passengers in a two-class configuration, compared to the A350-900's 315 in the same configuration. Similarly, its wingspan is also similar, with the A350 sitting at 212 feet and the Flying V projected to be at 213 feet, meaning that it could use any airport that can accommodate wide-body aircraft without any upgrades to taxiways or gates. Its cargo capacity is also broadly the same as the A350-900, sitting at 160 meters compared to the A350's 172. So what can this design do that the A350 can't? For a start, the Flying V design allows for much lower air resistance compared to conventional airliners. The conventional airliners of today consist of the fuselage, wings, and engines, which are three things to resist against. This design merges the fuselage and wings together and reduces the parts of the plane that can be resisted against. In addition, the Flying V is a flying wing design, which means that there is more wing surface area to produce more lift increasing the aircraft's efficiency further. All in all, the design boasts to be up to 20% more efficient than the Airbus A350, which is a title that no other passenger aircraft can presently claim. In terms of passenger comforts, the cabins can be laid out in a regular configuration as you might see in any other plane in the sky today but it has been suggested that the cabin could be optimized to have seats facing opposite each other, similar to what you might find on a train. This group seat design makes the flight better for families or business traveler groups or people traveling together and gives the flexibility to airlines to make their flights a more communal experience should the passengers be willing. Now, most people's experience of beds on flights usually range from people flying business class and above. Occasionally, you might get lucky and have an economy row to yourself so you can sprawl out in what little space you have, but the Flying V proposes something new. Bunk beds are only really seen on planes in the crew rest areas. However, the team at KLM and TUD Delft suggest having them available for passengers as well. These would be formed out of benches seating three passengers, which can then be reformed into three bunks to sleep in. This could be very handy and popular with economy passengers as these are the people that are least likely to get a good night's sleep on a long haul flight. There have also been two other radical new seat designs proposed for this project, the lounge seat and the private seats. The lounge seats are perhaps the most innovative out of all these designs as they are more swings than they are regular seats. 
Every other row is raised above the main cabin floor, allowing space for the seat shape to change, optimizing itself for eating, sleeping, or otherwise relaxing. Lastly, the private seats are sets of three seats made in a staggered formation. This allows passengers more personal space to relax and stretch, while the seats themselves remain comparable to the economy class seats of a regular A350. So what's the catch? Radical and eye-catching as its design is, it's not without its flaws and drawbacks. While it's true that head-on, the Flying V has much less surface area to resist against a conventional airliner at a higher angle of attack, such as takeoff, landing, or other low-speed flights, it actually has a larger surface area for wind to resist against, making low-speed flight somewhat of a complicated balancing act. This could potentially lead to the nose pitching up more than originally planned. This can be seen in the original footage of the model's maiden flight, where the nose pitches up in excess on takeoff. These flight instabilities could pose a potential safety risk if not dealt with properly. Furthermore, with only half the cabin close to the leading edge of the wing, the only practical place to have doors and other emergency exits, any cabin crew would find it challenging or impossible to evacuate the plane in the required 90 seconds should the need arise. This is one advantage of the conventional tube and wings design we see on all commercial aircraft flying today has. Everyone is close to an exit. So will we see flying V's in the skies overhead anytime soon? It doesn't look likely. As mentioned previously, airlines are very hesitant to operate new designs that follow the tube and wings pattern, let alone one that has never been seen before, even if it can live up to its offer of 20% greater efficiency over the Airbus A350. Then comes the question of actually building the thing. Even in the military aerospace industry, blended wing designs see limited use compared to their tube and wing counterparts. In the United States, there's the B-2 Spirit, famed as being the most expensive aircraft in history, as well as its replacement, the B-21 Raider. China has its soon-to-be-unveiled H-20 Heavy Bomber, and the rest of the world has experimented with blended wing drones and other such unmanned aerial vehicles. What these projects have in common is that not only are they all military designs, so not for commercial use, but they are only built by countries that have the appetite and the expertise to make an aircraft in this form with a specific mission in mind. The commercial world, however, is a much more conservative one. It is unlikely that any nation would be willing to invest so heavily in such a radical, untested technology as was seen in the 60s with the development of the Concorde, and even less likely that airlines would have the confidence enough in this design to invest their own capital into the project. This leaves the Flying V dead in the water, and merely a concept. In late September 2020, Airbus, an industry leader in its own right, released a rendering of a blended wing design in its three aircraft lineup for its Zero E project, designed to deliver viable hydrogen-powered aircraft by 2035. However, even Airbus, a company that has the backing of hundreds of airlines, as well as many governments across the world, still has yet to put its money where its mouth is. But at the end of the day, who knows what the future may hold? As is often the case with many military technologies, they may well end up trickling down into the commercial market, as was the case with the fly-by-wire technologies and even the jet engine itself. Do you see yourself flying on a flying V one day?